Hey everybody, welcome to vlog number seven. So a bit of a Christmas feature today, beside the Christmas tree to start, about to do a workout. I'm gonna use the instructions from last week. Um, so in between shots, I'm gonna be talking through why I'm doing different things, and you can apply it in your own workout. And then we're heading in to meet James from Just GA Things, the Instagram page, one of my favorite GA Instagram pages. He puts up incredible content, and we're going to the Christmas market in Galway. So catch you on the side of the gym, see you inside. Warming up, rope extensions through the back, just squeezing through, getting a bit of blood into the back before we go on any heavy move. Okay, superset, plate rows with wide cable rows, effectively trying to hit the inside of the back with the plates tucking in the elbows and then trying to hit lats with the wider hand grip on a cable. Tricep on triceps, so rope extension, splitting the rope, twisted over, overheads going wide, and then close grip pulsing down, trying to hit all three heads of the tricep. Three sets, 10 reps on each, hypertrophy range, trying to keep a little bit of size through the triceps. Working core abs, marathon to Sabra next year, so running 256 kilometers through the desert, carrying my backpack for six days with all my food. So I want to make my core super strong. So it's a great one for anyone's looking to flatten out their stomach, build a six pack and strengthen your core. So Swiss ball rollouts with jack knives, with a gym ball pass, with a crunch, working concentric, just complete time undertaking on your core, on your abs for the last move, just for a little bit of shape and size. Okay, hanging leg raises, nice easy one. Three sets of eight, 25, 30 second rest. Varying up these every week. I'm um, either going one legged, bringing one foot at a time, going two legged, going straight legs, just trying to work core today. Straight knees up, working through, abs, squeezing on each rep. Okay, so pull down, close grip. I'm leaning back more, because depending on where the angle of your body is, you're gonna hit a different part of your back. So you can go straight up, and you can start angling yourself back, and you're gonna hit a different part of your back. Um, so I'm working, just because of the plates we were doing earlier, it's gonna hit a different part. So it's the lean, but you can do it straight up, and then tilt your body, depending on what part you're trying to hit. Okay, into today's workout, nothing too crazy, doing a little bit of hypertrophy work for back, triceps, and then core work for the Marathon de Sava next year. I'm deloading my runs this week. Um, I'm not doing anything too crazy. I'm in New York next week, so I'll be doing a couple of long runs over there. Um, so be sure to check out my Snapchat and my Instagram stories. I'll be putting up my whole New York trip, and I'm gonna be a vlog next week from New York. Um, so about to head into the sauna now, then heading back to the house and meeting James from Just GA Things in the Christmas market in Bali. Like, 
I, I talk on podcasts very regularly about the flow state, which is your, it's when you switch off your prefrontal cortex, which is basically the part of your brain, the very front of your brain. It's the one that separates animals from people, from homo sapiens, from, from humans, because that part of our brain is developed. It's why we're able to see into the future. You know, it allows us to basically think about things that may happen and that can go wrong or can go right and we pull it back into reality and then we make it happen like other species don't have that dogs don't have that it's why dogs and different animals get so fucking excited when they see you because they're not thinking about the future they're with you at that moment in time we have that part of our brain that's always thinking about what might happen, what could go right, what could go wrong, worrying about paying bills, worrying about getting our job done, worrying about a meeting we've got tomorrow. The flow state, which Mikhail Shigetsmihai talks on, is when you shut that part of your brain down. So people that get into flow states, gamers, athletes, musicians, that part of the brain, it's transient hypofrontality. It's when you shut that part off and you're just there. You're in the zone, you're in the moment. and the thing that puts you into flow, that's how you find the thing you're supposed to do long term. You know, start making a list of all those things that you lose track of time. This is also a great way as well to know what people should be in your circle of, you know, your average, your five people. Like your friends, your family, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Like who is it that you're losing track of time when you're speaking with? Because that's flow state, you know? And when you build your life around dropping into flow, surfers are another one. You know, there's a great book by um, Stephen Kotler, The Rise of Superman, where he talks on the different flow states of athletes in extreme sports. And he's like, surfers knew what this flow state was for years. They just didn't have a name for it. It wasn't scientifically studied. But, you know, when you do those things that put you into that state, you don't know what opportunities are gonna come out of that. You don't know if someone's gonna pay you to do a review of the next tech and, and then that sets you off. You know, you don't know if going to the gym three, four hours a day lets you start up a podcast or write a book or become a trainer or whatever it is that allows you to help and serve more people. You just don't know. But the one piece of advice I'd offer is follow that path. Like, what, you'll know because as soon as I say, what are those things that you lose track of time? What are the things that where you're in the zone? Start doing more of that because the opportunities will come then. Because you have, a, like they say, greatness is in everybody. You know, you, one of the, it doesn't matter who you listen to, your Einsteins, your traditional Tony Robbins, or your Jack Canfields, your like modern day motivational speakers, they'll tell you there's greatness in everybody, but you gotta follow that. Like I'm not gonna play tech in three hours a day. You know, I used to game a little bit when I was younger, but I don't game anymore. It doesn't put me into flow, I get bored, you know? But being in the gym, training, doing videos, even writing now, puts me into a state of flow, so I double down on that, you know, and take home message for anybody listening and anybody watching so they can get benefit just what me and Tommy are talking about, is what are the things that put you into flow? What are the conversations and people that put you into flow? And then start basing your life around that because opportunities present themselves then. Look is when preparation meets opportunity, when the prepared mind meets an opportunity. You can prepare yourself by doing the things you love that you're better at than anybody else. I would never be great at Tekken because I don't love it. It doesn't put me into flow, but you are. And there's somebody else that will be amazing at you know, painting or writing or blogging or whatever it is that you're doing. And then the opportunities come. And when you take them, opportunities do pass. But when you take them and you say yes, and you don't let the story that you've created stop you from doing it, and you have the courage or you have the mental work done so that you're not letting fear, false evidence appearing real, my favorite acronym for fear. You're not letting fear stop you, or you're not letting society stop you, or you're not letting practicality stop you. Like fear, like practicality is fear in disguise. You know where it's, oh, it's not practical if I quit my job or I leave this relationship, or you have a fucking sunk cost, which is one of the things that pisses me right off and fucking can I see people close to me or when I get caught in the sunk cost fallacy where it's an, it's an economics term where you throw good money after bad like it's like when you make an investment and you're like well shit I put so much money in this now I have to put in a bit more and try and get back my return on investment my original investment we do that with people we do that with relationships like how many times have you heard somebody in a relationship be like oh we can't break up we've been together for seven years you're like but you've been fucking miserable for the last two like reevaluate things that's sunk cost fallacy like when you 
keep doing the things that you know are wrong. The definition of insanity is doing the wrong, the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Some cost fallacies when you put time and energy and money into something and you know it's not right, cut the fucking cost. It doesn't matter whether you've been in it for six years or five years. If it's not working, cut it because you're going to force serendipity and force opportunities to come your way when you start doing the thing you're meant to do and you're not doing something just because you've done it for five years or you've done it for 10 years or you've been seeing this person or going out with this person for 15 years that's some cost fallacy you know that's opportunity meets the prepared mind and that's how luck comes but you got to take the step and make sure that you're prepared mentally for when those opportunities come so yeah it's a little bit of a, a rant we didn't even know what we were going to talk about in today's fucking car talk so <laughs> on that top we just press play so uh yeah rant over post-workout meal uh baked potato two chicken breasts broccoli and organic ketchup um, so just a little bit of a refuel after the workout. As I said, energy levels are a little bit lower today, um, so I'm actually gonna ramp up my carbs just for tomorrow's run. Um, also, Tommy is reading this book, which is one of my favorites, Stephen Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I actually quoted that book in my best-selling book, The Fitness Mindset, it's in the start of the mindset section, um, because when I was walking down East London, there's a section in there where he gets you the picture being at your own funeral, and then the words that come out of your family members' mouths, the people who knew you's mouths, um, and I actually quoted that whole section in my book because it was a massive turning point for me. Um, so it's cool to see Tommy read that there's, I don't know how many million copies, the 15 million copies of the souls. Book's incredible, highly recommended for people. Um, so yeah, check that one out as well. And uh, we are gonna finish this and then we're gonna head into the Christmas market in Galway, um, which looks amazing. I drove through it a couple of times where we're officially gonna meet James and we're talking through a couple of things that we're doing for next year. Uh, so I'll see you in the Christmas market. <music> I'm doing business, yeah, yeah, uh, marketing, and media. So I was thinking, yeah. Um, how are you finding it? Good, you it's really year? interesting. First. First year. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Good thing for you as well. Yeah, it's oh, very it's so fucking where you're at. Yeah. Um, like every marketing lecture is just making everything make more sense in terms of my like little business with over the back spot. Yeah. So it's all like linking in and like every time a new lecture comes in, I'm like, geez, that's a good idea. Yeah. Like we were talking about uh, sponsorship and promotion yesterday. And it was like sponsor GA Club, and it's so funny way she said, she said GA Club, and yeah. I was like, brilliant. It's like I'm gonna I'm gonna sponsor the Clare Miners next year, and they get them all gloves, and then it'll reach all their clubs. You have Milltown players, Sarsfields players, Moorfield, Moorfield. They're actually in the Leinster. You see that Leinster? Yeah, I saw that. Couldn't believe that. Fuck, they're a small club, aren't yeah, they? Small like, well, the biggest in Clare, but yeah. small in in terms of. But like. Yeah. Club geography, they're yeah, small. Yeah, yeah, small. yeah, yeah. The senior as well. Yeah, yeah. Fair and they bet Rath knew that bet um, Vincent's. Yeah, yeah. It was them that. Yeah, it was them that. That's where they came up onto my radar when they bet Vincent's. I was yeah. like, Fuck. And I was like, Jesus, Rath knew must be good. But more yeah. bet them by six or seven points. Jesus. So like, they must be that good. Yeah, yeah. Or Vincent's must have been horrible. He, they're probably a combination because you've got the likes of Vincent's have to have an off day as well. Yeah. But you've got to put them away. Yeah. Like. Well, what I heard of Rath knew is they're not great footballers, but they have stamina and. Strength. Yeah. And could you imagine this Mark and Connolly? If you're pushing yeah. him off the ball, but yeah. you can keep on pushing him off the ball yeah. and keep up with him. Well, the time of year would help as well. The yeah. soft ground, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, terrible time of year to play football. Yeah. You know, you have footballers like Connolly, he's not going to like that. No, no, no. Like, so if he's not performing and the second best footballer is not performing, I say Rath knew that's how they got it over. Yeah. Them, you know? Fucking hell. I couldn't believe that. Great idea of sponsoring the Miners, though. Yeah. yeah.
Okay, gonna close out this vlog here. Um, so coming up to 9 p.m., gonna go to bed shortly. Um, up since five, so a pretty long day today. Um, after meeting James, went home Tuesdays. We shoot all the program work uh, for people coming to the top 50, check ins with people in the GA program. Um, so closing out tonight, magnesium. Uh, help unwind my central nervous system. Uh, I find it really, really hard to kind of switch off at night time, particularly if you've been on, on the go all day. I know a lot of people that are teachers or nurses or in offices where they're on all day. Um, sometimes your central nervous system is just going crazy. So adding in some magnesium can help. Um, and I've got glutamine, which is something I take nearly all through the winter. So five, 10 grams, particularly on days where I'm either feeling low or my training's been particularly intense because glutamine is one of the first amino acids that gets depleted in people that train a lot. So I try and supplement it back in. Um, it's also been shown to kind of boost natural growth hormone in a lot of people taking it before bed. Um, any good studies on PubMed will bring that up. Um, so I'm gonna close out the vlog here. I'm gonna have my magnesium, gonna have my glutamine, and I'm gonna have some GABA, um, and then back up again for five tomorrow working out early in the morning so that'll all be on snapchat um so massive thank you for joining on today's vlog hope you got a lot of value next week's one's going to be in new york so i'm flying to new york on monday and uh, myself and my mom are there for a few days i got a couple of things i got to take care of over there um, and then we got a couple of days off so the next vlog is going to be in new york so stay tuned to my snapchat my instagram stories i'm going to be putting the whole lot up there uh, for the five days that we're away and then next week's vlog is also going to be there i'm also going to try and get a run in central park at some stage and um, so be sure to stay tuned for that anything else you want to see in the vlog the week after next week's going to be different because obviously it'll be in the states uh, but anything else you want to see let me know comment below here um i think we're seven vlogs in now so kind of starting to get a bit of a routine together and um, the training with the instructions over went down well last week so let me know if you want to see that more um, and then i'll keep that on the training days um, and then anything else you want to see so massive thank you for watching if you've got this far um, and i'll catch up with everybody next week for vlog number eight from new york